Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing you God's truth today. Now, this is a new week, praise God. And I'm trusting the Spirit of God that He would bring His truth to you today. Now, I've got a lot of things in my spirit that I want to share with you. But before we do that, just like we do on this broadcast, I would like us to demand for our daily bread. Are you ready? Join me in faith right now and say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, you see, it's your right to demand these things. You say, but doesn't God know? Jesus said it. When you pray, pray like this. Praise God. And, and God instructed me that on this broadcast, we should do this every time. So you that is listening to this broadcast, you see, bringing yourself, you know, the Bible says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. How do you do that? You bring yourself into subjection to the word and to the spirit of God. And when you do that, then you let the glory of the master, you let the glory of Jesus take charge over your life and over every situation that you find yourself in. But sometimes we, we feel we know what we are doing. So you, you want to show that you are tough. You want to show that you are strong. Hey, that will take you nowhere until you bring yourself under the mighty hand of God. Now I'm sharing with you we began talking, talking about this last week. I'm sharing with you on the glory of Jesus. And our text is from John chapter 17 and verse 22. Jesus declaring, I said, the glory that you have given me, he was talking to the Father, I have given to them. So Jesus have released to us the glory that he had that was given to him by the Father. And I told you that this glory is the Holy Spirit. Now, I shared a lot with you last week. And the more we talk about this, the more I meditate on this, the more I, it dawns on me that, hey, we are so far from the real work and ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We are so far from it. We are actually rigmaroling in darkness. But until we get ourselves to the place where we begin to function in the reality of the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives, then we will not be able to function in the, in the maximum or the, the excellence of God's plan for our lives. I'm telling you the truth. We... It, recently, the, the Lord was talking to me about um, things in, along this line. And I began to ask myself truly, what have we been preaching? What have we been preaching? Now, it's been a burden in my heart for many years. And these are things I've been praying about. And I've been asking the Lord that in, in reality, from my own standpoint, based on the things I have read, based on the things I've experienced. Now, I know Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. But then, in studying the scriptures, I realized, or, or the question came to my heart, how far have we gone in this journey of him building his church? How far have we gone in, in the kingdom of God that he's building? And because when you read history and you read about revivals and read about the work of God in several nations, you begin to ask yourself, really, I mean, what's the point? What are we doing? So as though there's a revival in town and everybody's excited. And after a while, there's a, there's a settlement. Everybody gets calm. And then there's another revival in town. And we keep doing the same things again. So like we're just going around in circles. 
But I don't think that's the mind of God. I don't think that's what God wants. I believe the church is supposed to advance. The church is supposed to look back and say, hey, we, we, we've gone this far and this is where we're headed to. The question is always, where are we headed for? Where are we headed to? So we get confused about what exactly does God want? How does God want us to live our lives? But I want you to listen and, and, and listen well. There is a reason the Bible lets us know in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and Paul was speaking, I think from verse 9 to 11. He says, as it is written, let me, let me read that scripture. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Verse 9, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. But as it is written, I had not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. Now you look at a scripture like this. I have not seen, ear have not heard. It has not entered the heart of anyone. The things that God has prepared for those that love him. So you ask yourself this question. When did God prepare these things for those that love him? And I'll tell you the truth. He prepared them from the foundation of the world. Now, when we say from the foundation of the world, get this clear. Anytime you read the Bible, talk about the foundation of the world. He's talking about the six days of God's creation. He's talking about Genesis chapter 1. Every time you see scripture refers to the foundation of the world, he's referring to, or before the foundation of the world, he's referring to Genesis chapter 1. Now, you've heard me say this, say this before, that the life as we have it on earth today actually started from Genesis chapter 2 and verse 4. Everything that was done before Genesis chapter 2 verse 4 was done in darkness. So now that's what you consider before the foundation of the world. You understand what I'm saying? So when God was laying the foundation of the world, he laid it by speaking. Okay. So every plan that he made, he made it then. So here, when he says, I have not seen, he have not heard, neither has he entered into the heart of man the things. I call me Nisaika, but the things God has prepared for those that love him. Question now is, are you one of those that love God? If you do, now, let me tell you this truth. You don't just wake up and say, I love God. No, no. It takes the spirit of God to love God. Because you cannot love who you don't know. Are you getting what I'm saying? You can't love who you don't know. So it takes the Spirit of God to reveal God to us. And that means it takes the Spirit of God for us to function in love. Romans tells us the love of God is shed abroad in our heart. So when that love is working in your heart, then you can express that love towards God by keeping His word. Yeah. All right. So now he says, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither has it have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for those that love him. So these things were prepared before the foundation of the world. Now, before the foundation of the world, no one existed there. Nothing existed. The only being or the only thing or the only person that existed then was the Holy Spirit. Now, you know, the more I say this, the more I pray you come to understand this truth. Oh, the church needs to understand this. The only one that was there when God was laying the foundation of the world is the Holy Spirit. How is it the Holy Spirit? Because he was the one that was giving the Father all trance. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? He was the one giving the father utterance. So the Holy Spirit was there. We find this in, in Proverbs chapter 8. He said it himself. He said, I was there. I Kolisha. Let me show you. See, when we just say this, okay, okay. Proverbs chapter 8. Mm. From verse 22, I want you to follow this. Now it says, now, now I could. Now, you know from verse 1, he began to say, does not wisdom cry, does not wisdom utter its voice and, and all stuff. I have always to, told this to believers. If you want to understand Proverbs chapter 8, remove wisdom and put the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, because that's the one who was, who he was talking about. Or that's the one who was actually talking. Praise God. Now, Proverbs 26 says, The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his ways, before his works of old. Did you see that? Now, wisdom, who's the Holy Spirit? He's speaking here. Now, just believe me. See, Proverbs chapter 8 was just the Holy Spirit he was talking about. So now he says, the Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting from the beginning or ever the earth was before the foundation of the world. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no found, fountains abounding with water before those things came, before the mountains were settled, before the hills, I was brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the field, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. Now let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. So when I say God made these plans before the foundation of the world, there was no witness but the Holy Spirit. See, so it's only the Holy Spirit that was there. Now look at what he says next in verse 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. It says, But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. The only one that was there when God was making these plans that he says now when he says no i have seen it's not because god is hiding it it's because see, sincerely speaking <laughs> you can't find it anywhere you can't find it anywhere these things are all hidden i told you the only one who knows is the only one who was there and that's the holy spirit but guess what don't think Oh, God hid all these things, so he doesn't want anybody to know. No, that's why Jesus said, The glory that you have given me, I have given them. The glory is the Holy Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit is in us. And here he says, But God has revealed them to us by his Spirit. Those things I have not seen, those things I have not heard, those things that have not entered into the heart of men brothers and sisters every prophecy you have received so far it is not telling you the deep truth about what i'm sharing with you what what the holy spirit is dealing what the holy spirit wants to do in your life is what no eye have seen is what no ear have heard question is how much are you willing to trust him now, if I have not seen, if he have not heard, then question also, who's going to counsel you on this journey? Who's going to help you out on this journey? A journey that no one has seen, a journey that no ear have heard, a journey that no heart has perceived. And now, the Holy Spirit begins to help you in taking you on this journey and you're looking for someone who will say you're on the right track. How? No, sincerely, how? On what basis is he going to say you're on the right track? 
Now, I know, you see, as, as humans, we always like to be in control, in control of our lives, in control of our children, both physical and spiritual. We want to, we want to be sure, not, not out of wickedness, because people do, do it out of wickedness, but not, not, I'm talking about genuineness now, not out of wickedness, but we just want to be sure that you are not making a mistake. But hey, the truth is this, no one is qualified to take you on this journey because no one have had experience on that journey everybody would walk on his own journey by the holy spirit now the little you have experienced in life you will notice that there are times the lord is instructing you to do something and nobody seems to understand you everybody around you seems not to understand what you're saying so now, you know, when you talk about things like this, people begin to say, hey, but, but, but if you don't put those kind of control, it, there's going to be chaos. Why are we too afraid of chaos that we don't trust the one who's in charge? There is the one who's in charge. He's the Holy Spirit. So why are we too scared of chaos? Now, there are times, even in your life, the work of the Holy Spirit will require you to take certain risk. Now, when you're about to take that risk, everybody will say, caution, 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 caution. Yes, they are speaking from the genuineness of their hearts. But you see, every one of us must come to that place where we learn to trust the Spirit of God. Because he is the only one that knows this journey. He is the only one that knows the secret things that God has not placed in the heart of anyone. I'm sorry to tell you, no great prophet can give you this exactly. They can only touch parts of it. But no one will tell you this is exactly how it's going to be. You've got to wake up for yourself. And you've got to learn how to trust the Holy Spirit. Oh, I'll tell you something that may, that may shock some of you. Not even the scriptures. Kalima Sabrene. Yeah, I said it. Not even the scriptures will be able to guide you accurately. Now, my saying the scripture is not important. So important. It gives guidance, but I'm telling you the truth. Everybody we read, we read about in the scriptures got to that place. Now, funny enough, they didn't even have the scriptures. The people we read about in the scriptures. I've told you this many times. Years ago, the Lord spoke to me, he said, don't allow the scriptures to become your limitation. Why? I'll tell you why. And, and please understand me. The scriptures is perfect, okay? But the understanding of the scriptures is where we have a big problem. Most of the things we understand from the scriptures are things men have handed down to us. But those things have their limitations. So if we don't allow the Holy Spirit to begin to push us so that by his work in our lives, we'll begin to under or, or explain or interpret the scriptures. We do not use the scriptures to limit the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Now, how do you use the scriptures to limit the work of the Holy Spirit in your life? Because the understanding you have of the scriptures today is limited. And if you use that understanding, you will actually block the work of the Holy Spirit. But if you trust in the Holy Spirit for him to move you, I'll give you an example. You want to do something, the scriptures. Now, now, for example, most times when you hear believers or preachers argue, and you get to realize that the reason for their argument, they are not actually arguing the truth. They are arguing from the place of their understanding. When truth comes, they both rea will realize that actually oh, none of us was right. Oh, yes. There are several subjects like that that you've had argument from this side or from that side. And when you go back to the Lord and say, Lord, 
what's the truth concerning them? By the time he opens up the truth to you, you look at both of them and say, I wish these two people know that they are just blabbing or blabbering. None of them is right. But see, that's what the Holy Spirit is doing in our lives today. And I pray you release yourself to trust Him. Don't let anything become your limit. I'm going to be sharing stuff with you. And listen to me, if you are trust, if you are going to expand, if you are going to get into the glory of God, then you've got to pay attention because my time is up today. <laughs> Praise God. Yes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I pray for you today that the Holy Spirit will begin in a new way to reveal himself to you. And I pray that there will be no limitation in your life that will hinder the progress that you are supposed to make in him. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.